CEOs of some top gun manufacturers getting grilled by lawmakers on Capitol Hill by the House Oversight Committee today about rising mass shootings and gun violence in America. Democrats on this panel say the companies are marketing weapons of war to children and profiting from the nationwide gun violence epidemic. We're going to take a live look there at the hearing. There's Congressman Jamie Raskin. It's underway right now. Uh, the the, the Companies, of course, say they are making lawful weapons in a lawful and responsible way, and they can't be held accountable for the actions of individuals or the failures of the gun laws on the books. But it has led to some fireworks. Earlier, it led to a heated exchange between Democratic Committee Chairwoman Carolyn Maloney and Marty Daniel. He's the CEO of Daniel Defense. That company made the rifle used in the Uvalde shooting. Take a listen. Mr. Daniel, you have sent thoughts and prayers to the victims of Uvalde but you have never accepted responsibility for selling the weapons that killed these innocent children. And you testified earlier uh, that there has been a, a decline in personal responsibility. I, I want to give you the opportunity now to show personal responsibility. Will you accept personal responsibility for your company's role in this tragedy and apologize to the families of Uvalde? Chairwoman Maloney, these acts are committed by murderers. The murderers are responsible. ABC News senior investigative reporter Aaron Katursky and ABC politics reporter Brittany Shepard are here now for more. So, Aaron, uh, what do you make of, of uh, Mr. Daniel's response there in that exchange? And what are we learning about, about Daniel Defense and his company in these hearings? Well, we know that Daniel Defense has made millions of dollars. The House Oversight Committee presented a report, Terry, where they showed the, the increasing profits year after year as some eight and a half million more Americans purchased a firearm in, in 2020 than, than had previously. And so the, the, the committee wants to show that the, the, the marketing is working and that the company raking in, uh, you know, millions of dollars and at the same time, the, the, the gun violence you know, rages in, in the country. And I think that the manufacturers, uh, Daniel Defense and the others, were, were rather predictable in trying to distance themselves from what their products do. They say their products are lawful and that it's the people who use them to, to commit these atrocities that, that really should be held responsible. And in that way, Terry, it sounds an awful lot like, like opioids manufacturers and, and the way Purdue Pharma used to say that it was addicts who were abusing the, the lawful product that they made. And of course, uh, in this country, we've had more success with, with holding opioids manufacturers accountable. Guns are sacrosanct in this country, as you know, Terry, and, and it doesn't seem like this committee got any closer so far today to, to agreeing on holding gun makers accountable for, for mass shootings. Uh, there's been an attempt to do that for a long time. A law was passed in 2005 that shields gun manufacturers from that kind of liability. Brittany, so what were your takeaways from this testimony? Well, I was really struck about how witnesses and even members of the committee tried to counter-program against the realities of human suffering. You saw at the top of the committee snippets of testimony from those affected survivors, friends, family, parents of those who have been affected by death and mass shootings. And I think there were two strategies. One, distraction. You saw that from committee member Rep. Jody Heiss of Georgia, a far conservative candidate there. And he was quick to pivot the conversation in ways Republicans have been pivoting conversations about stringent gun legislation for the last six months to, to year, pivoting it on Democrats about defunding the police and being soft on crime. Of course, those are two topics not to come up. It's not what the hearing was about, but he took a significant amount of, of his statement of blasting Democrats and blasting Chair Maloney, saying that everything was hogwash and it was a political uh, questioning only, and that Chairman Maloney herself should be apologizing to gun manufacturers and the American people for, in effect, wasting their time saying you wouldn't go after the creators of forks and spoons for the obesity crisis. And then you saw an attempt to humanize their product from, gun, from these gun manufacturer witnesses saying, we are companies made up of mothers and fathers and brothers and sisters, and our product is made here in America. And that this issue is really a community issue, and one for mental health, um, for Congress to legislate on the local level and for state houses to deal with on their own turf while offering, of course, the expected thoughts and prayers.
Thoughts and prayers. Uh, Aaron, the, the AR-15 style rifle, that platform has just become a phenomenon in American life. Uh, and Cherwin Maloney said she intends to subpoena Smith & Wesson, another manufacturer. There are so many of these kinds of weapons. Smith & Wesson invited to this hearing. They didn't show up. Uh, so what's that conflict about and what is the chairwoman, what is she hoping to gain by getting Smith & Wesson in as well? I think to get another gun maker to come in and, and show about their profits, show about their marketing. Uh, the, there, there are those on the committee, the Democrats especially, who believe that it's the marketing of these weapons that, that targets young men who, who we've seen carry out the, some of the deadliest mass shootings of late. And, and some of these marketing materials uh, point to, you know, building up your masculinity or, or punching your manhood card. And, and they believe that that is, is, is enticing these young men to these products. Um, and, and in that way, Terry, I think they're, they're trying to, to say that let's start with the AR-15. We heard some of the gun makers rightly point out that most of the crime committed with guns in this country is done with a handgun. Uh, but the committee clearly wants to start somewhere, and they'd like to start with this semi-automatic rifle that is used uh, in, 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 has become the weapon of choice in, in some of these mass shootings. thought it was interesting that one of the witnesses, though, was a woman who supports the AR-15 because she said it's a, a good weapon for women to use as they try to counter sexual violence on college campuses. She said the recoil is easier for women to deal with than an ordinary gun. Well, uh, that's why it was developed the way it was, not for women in particular, but to be an efficient, powerful, lightweight weapon that is e more easily used than, uh, than its predecessors. Brittany, uh, this is an effort to get Congress to hold gun makers accountable. Uh, there are other ways perhaps to address that, that problem that the AR-15 has. It seems become a kind of iconic or even totemic symbol for troubled minds. Uh, one recommendation is that long guns should have uh, a, an age, a minimum age of 21 for purchase instead of 18. But this uh, effort to get the corporations being held accountable, do you think that's something Congress is going to be able to do? Well, not really. And even if they wanted to, they didn't know that they're in a really particularly difficult place, especially Democrats. We're, gonna, we're looking right into an August recess. They have about a week to get things done in the very short term. And congressmen know that they are answerable to their constituents, even those Democrats who are in vulnerable, swingy places. And they know that if even if they vote yes on any sort of legislation that holds gun manufacturers accountable, we're seeing an assault weapons ban trying to get pushed through Congress this week. I think it would be really difficult to get in the House. They can only afford to lose four Democrats, and we don't really know if they have the votes there. But even if they did, these Democrats and some Republicans are going to have to go to their home districts next week to say, yes, I voted yes on a legislation that I know that was going to fail the Senate. And Republicans are going to be running rampant on that, digital ads here, there, and everywhere. So, of course, you know, we don't want to think about the political ramifications of this, but this top of mind for many of the members of Congress. So and, I think it would be very curious to see. And you make a great point there, there, Brittany. Why take a vote that you know is meaningless simply as a performative act of politics that'll, that'll hurt you back home? Maybe, uh, maybe that is going to be a problem for Democrats. Brittany, Aaron, thanks very much. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.